We can't tell you his name. It's too dangerous to show his face. He won't even allow his voice to be recorded as he speaks through his translator. But we can show you these. Almost 55,000 photos he risked his life to bring out of Syria, some of which have never been seen publicly until now. And he's risking his life again to plead with Congress to act. How are you feeling in this moment, being back in Washington again? My feeling being here is a feeling of a bit of disappointment and at the same time frustration because after everything that I've done in order to expose what the regime has done, we have yet to see any real action. His code name is Caesar. He was a military photographer in Damascus when the civil war began in 2011. He says he immediately realized what he was then documenting were not accidental deaths, but torture. For example, many of the bodies had their eyes gouged out. Most of these bodies had very deep cuts. Most of them were emaciated, starved for many, many months, and also marks all over their bodies from head to toe. And I would see their jaws and teeth broken. Instead of defecting right after the war broke out, Caesar says he decided to stay for two and a half years to bear witness, collect evidence, and to expose what really was happening in his country where any sign of sympathy for the dead could be interpreted as betrayal of the regime. I would work for hours taking photographs, loading the photographs, and I would have to hide my emotions. I would have to pray that a tear does not come down my face, because if they saw one tear, if they saw one expression on my face that showed sympathy, then I would be killed, as would my family. How did you do that? I don't know. In 2013, he finally fled and brought with him what the FBI confirmed as authentic and the State Department's ambassador for war crimes described as stronger evidence than what existed against the Nazis. The Syrian government has denied responsibility and called the photos fake. Caesar made his first trip to Capitol Hill in 2014, testifying before Congress undercover in the exact same disguise he used for our interview. I honestly thought that if I could have the courage to go for the years that I did, doing the work that I did, endangering my life every single day, that once I came out and showed the world what I had, that the entire conscience of the world would move. And then that didn't. Five whole years, the world did not move. I'll never forget what he showed us. The sanctions bill sparked by Caesar's testimony and photographs has passed the House three times with bipartisan support, but has yet to make it to the Senate floor. So what I am pleading is for the American people to please save the Syrian people, save these people that do not deserve the hellish nightmare that they're living in. One of the lawmakers Caesar made his case to this time, Senator Lindsey Graham. Not only is he a longtime critic of Bashar al-Assad, Graham also has had the ear of President Trump, and he revealed to CNN that he's introducing a resolution to declare Assad a war criminal. To the people in Syria, we're not turning our back on you. I wish we could do better. The administration needs to do more, quite frankly. We don't have a coherent strategy in Syria, and I am committed 100 percent to not letting Assad get away with it and standing behind people like Caesar, and I'm going to make my colleagues in the Senate vote. Until then, the bill sits on Senator Mitch McConnell's desk and leaves Caesar right back where he began, putting his life on the line to try and convince the world to care and once and for all not look away. We're in the Holocaust Museum, and after the Holocaust, the world said never again. And I'm really struck by seeing the atrocities coming out of Syria and the fact that the world is not saying that. You're right. How many more children must be killed? How many more men must be tortured to death? How many more women must be raped? Until you mean it when you say never again.